Now that we have our airplane, let's uh, look at some additional modifications to it. Firstly, I'm going to turn this airplane into a biplane. Although it looks like a handsome jet fighter, um, there's a couple of additional moves that would be great to show you, and so we're going to change it into a biplane. Um, I'm going to select the plane once again, and uh, with the polygon level highlighted, I'm going to select the polygons that comprise the two existing wings. Now we can confirm that those are picked. It's always a good idea to pan around and confirm that you've selected the polygons in question. Um, it's very easy to select something and think that you have and not. Conversely, it's also easy to accidentally pick something that you don't want selected. Let's say, for example, um, if I did want to select just the wings and we change our selection method maybe to be an irregular bounding box and I'm going to go ahead and select and let's just accidentally on purpose for the sake of the demonstration um, overlap into some other polygons and okay there we go so see we've got all of these other polygons that we don't want in particular polygons on the back side of the airplane fuselage so one very important tool to get used to using when it comes to selecting um, anything is to make sure that back facing is intermittently turned on and off you'll notice if this is checked and I go to drag a window around the plane polygons that the polygons that are facing away from me are not selected definitely make sure to turn this on and off as you work um, as needed to be able to isolate polygons or other elements you're trying to get a hold of. Okay, so back to where we were. Let's get a hold of all of the polygons on both wings. Once again, we can confirm that we have all of those. And what I'm going to do next is um, we're going to go to the uh, edit geometry and we can find here a location where we can detach. So I'm going to detach a copy of this set of polygons. So we'll give it a name. Let's call it you know, upper wing for right now. And you'll notice that it is no longer highlighted. Okay. So if we let go and pick on that item and move, that our wings are now detached. Okay, so I'd actually meant to detach these as a clone and I missed checking that box and just for your reference um, you know we can do that ag again but uh, let me point it out here these are selected I go to detach um, I should have detached them as a clone remember that for the next time but I can still proceed with what I have here so what I'm going to do next is duplicate this and so I'm going to hold down shift and drag up um, a set of polygons here as a copy and we'll go ahead and call that um, you know upper wing up UW okay and we'll let go of the lower set of wings and if we pan around uh, we'll notice it's just above the cab uh, cabin there that's fine um, I'm gonna grab the upper set we'll lower them down into place and I want them to be maybe you know just above the the place where the pilot is going to sit. Okay, great. So with this group set, um, I'm going to next apply a cap holes modifier. What I'm going to do is use a bridge tool to join these together as one unit. Uh, but before I can do that, I need to make sure that there is a face or a surface here from which I can do the bridging. So on top of my um, editable poly here. I'm going to pull down to where I can find the cap holes modifier. Cap holes, see it right here. And this only works if the holes are completely bounded and facing in one direction. So for example, if we're missing the top of the wing and the side of the wing, the cap holes would fail to work. Okay, so now that it's capped, we can go ahead and collapse this. I'm going to collapse all. And it's just an editable poly now and with the edible poly still selected we'll go into the face mode and I'll select the op opposite uh, polygons here front 
in front of both sides of those wings. We pan around and make sure nothing else has been selected. Great. And I'll move down here to where we find the bridge tool. Now with bridge, um, we can click on the button and without making any changes, it's basically going to play connect the dots here and join everything together. Um, there's all sorts of other variations to bridge. This could twist as it bridges and you could add extra subdivisions to the twisting. This is something I suggest you experiment with on your own. Go ahead and click OK. So if we look at the front view now, we could make some additional adjustments. Maybe in fact we'll go into an orthographic view. I'll select the vertex um, level of topology. We'll grab all of the points on the top edge of the wing and we can move those down into place. That upper wing usually wants to be a little bit thinner and uh, I know this isn't aerodynamically correct, but it's, uh, it's gonna be close enough for the sake of our demonstration. Okay, so we have two sets of wings now. We have this lower set that was detached, the upper, and then we have the fuselage. So I'm going to come back to my fuselage. In fact, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and call this plane um, up here in the modifier um, palette area. And I'm going to select the fuselage and we'll go into the polygon level. And we're going to now attach these two sets of wings back into the plane. I'll click on the attach window. Attach here on the button would allow me to come out and pick these things manually, which is probably fine for this simple file. Uh, but if we had a more elaborate file with um, a long list of items to pick through, it'd be much easier to select from list, in which case you could pick out the items that you know would actually fit the, the attaching job that you want to do. Okay, so we want both of these items to be attached and we'll click attach and now we have one unified mesh. So now that we have our biplane started I want to be able to join the cabin to the upper wing and I need a polygon that I can bridge from the top of this uh, form up into the underside of the wing. So I'm going to use something called inset and if I click on the inset button um, I'm going to do this by polygon and I could adjust the amount of the inset and basically it's like a parallel offset so it produces an extra polygon and then once it's there we can sort of shift it around into place so that it's closer in agreement with the top of the canopy. Okay we'll come back and adjust that guy in just a minute. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we need some struts for our wings. So I'm going to select the lower and upper portion um, of the wing that face each other here on the inside. We'll go back to an orthographic view. Easy to accomplish this in a front view. And I will turn on my slicing plane once again. And let's rotate the slicing plane into place. And let's slide that slicing plane over to one side. And maybe we want to put a slice um, in about this location. Let's go ahead and click slice. I need an additional slice here, slice, and let's come over just a little bit closer to the cabin, and we will slice, and again, slice. Okay, now I could continue doing this on the opposite side of the plane, great, however, you might notice that after a while it's going to be a lot of extra work to be going back and forth between both sides of the plane. And what if we happen to get off from one side to the next? Now, a plane is generally a symmetrical uh, object and so we have our geometries on this side that we could use to build our struts. Why don't we just use half the plane to build this whole thing? So if I select the plane, one of the first things I'm going to do here is get rid of half of this. So I'm going to come into my modifier stack and I'm going to find the slicing tool. And a slicing tool is not dissimilar from the slicing plane that we use to add additional geometries. However, the difference is um, this operates on a selection set um, for the purpose of producing a section. So um, I need to rotate this into place. Since this is a modifier, I need to roll out the modifier here to get a hold of the slicing plane. And I will rotate that up into place. 
Now you might notice, you see there is a line being introduced here on the geometry as I'm rotating this into place. I'm going to look down below until I get to exactly 90 degrees. Let's confirm that we're in the center of the plane. I'm going to go back to my uh, plan view and since this got dropped right on the geometry symmetrically to begin when we rotate it by 90 degrees it should be right on the center and then we can remove the top or remove the bottom in our case it's remove the bottom because our slices are already on the opposite side I am going ahead and roll this guy back up and in fact I'm going to go ahead and collapse it because I no longer need the opposite side of the plane and what we'll do instead is we'll introduce something called a symmetry modifier and if I roll down to where the symmetry modifier is and add that in it'll automatically set up for us the um, opposite side of the plane and uh, we might need to uh, switch between what axes it's mirroring about and it looks like we're in good shape here now we've got our three-dimensional plane and as we build the struts on the one side we'll see that they'll simultaneously up update on the opposite side okay as you can see I've built the first strut and if we want to proceed by completing the second uh, strut we're going to grab the polygons on both the underside of the top and the top side of the bottom and I'm going to use the bridge tool and I've set this up to taper and to have an additional set of subdivisions in here so that the information um, is possible to achieve. You notice if I have no subdivisions um, the taper doesn't even work and uh, so I've set mine to 20. Um, a biplane doesn't really look like this but this is just an opportunity to exercise some of the tools further. Okay so there we go we've got a biplane and we've operated on half of it we've got our struts and oh yes one last thing let's uh, go ahead and join the roof and uh, I'm inside the symmetry modifier so I need to drop down into the edible polygon um, level then I can grab the poly on the top um, I've zoomed in instead closely and let's pan up and we'll grab the polygon on the top so I've got a hold of polygon on both underside of the top wing and the top of the canopy and I want to once again use my bridge tool and I'm just going to simply select on bridge now um, I don't exactly want all these extra polygons in here they're not useful for me so let's come back in by window we don't really need the taper we don't need the extra subdivisions we basically want these two base simply to be um, connected together and I'm going to click OK and um, we're pretty close to having our plane done. Now we could add engines and all sorts of other fancy things but I think this walks you through some basic steps that you're going to need to follow.